Howdy folks, it's Howie here. I read a book. Was it a book? Wow, it's a lot of book. Uh, this was not a request, uh, really, so much as a recommendation. Dank Panther has been going on how I need to read Invisible. In Invincible, not Invisible. You can see him. No, Invincible, he's Invincible. Um, I need to read it, I need to read it. He goes on and on. And I was talking to him in a live show the other, oh, a week ago or so. And I was nearing the end, and he goes, what do you think of it? I'm like, holy shit, this thing is, it's amazing. Now, the problem is, I mean, it's a big book. The problem is, it's, uh, it's big. It's not that it's a lot of issues, because um, it reads pretty fast. But you kind of have to get settled somewhere to read it, unfortunately. that's That was my only issue with this thing. Because a lot of times I'll throw a book bag over my shoulder and have one or two graphic novels in it. Somewhere I'm waiting. Maybe I have to go wait for 10 minutes somewhere for something, for whatever. And I read. And you, can do, you can't do that with this. Look at this thing. Look at the thickness of that book. It is so heavy and so unwieldy. You can't read it sitting in your car. It's so heavy in a book bag. Because <laughs> you put two graphic it's nothing. It's less than a pound. It's, this thing's super big, super dense. It's 47 issues of Invincible. <clears throat> Plus you get some bonus. I don't know, what should we call it? Bonus material? Yeah, I'll call it bonus. Probably 50 issues worth of material, I'd say, in it all. Because every once in a while, you get what might have been a uh, short story or something from an anthology that features him, Invincible. And that's thrown in within the chronological order, so you see where that story would have come out. So this is everything from issue one to issue 47 that he's in. Uh, side stuff and everything. Now, I, I guess if there's a book like that takes place in the same universe, um, like, like they identified that this takes place within the Image universe, and Savage Dragon shows up in here, Shadowhawk, some of the stuff from the early Image days show up as characters within the universe. So it's, it's the Image hero universe. Um, and if he ever showed up in Savage Dragon, I don't, I don't think that would have been put in here. I don't think he ever did. But who knows? Who knows? I don't read all that. But it is uh, it's solid. It's by uh, Kirkman, Robert Kirkman. He is the guy who writes uh, Walking Dead, the comic book. And it has a lot to do with the TV show, and I think, you know, he doesn't fully write it. He's not 100% involved in it, but he's in the TV show and to some degree. He's a wealthy, wealthy man. And I know this is something that uh, Comics Tropes will never, ever do. So I'm happy reviewing Kirkman stuff, because I'm not ever crossing over. Not that I have any competition to him. I just don't. There's some stuff he did, like um, Stumptown. And I was thinking of reviewing Stumptown, and I'm like, the guy did it so good, and I suck, you know, so I'm never going to touch Stumptown, even though I love the Stumptown books by uh, Greg Rucka. I think they're just fantastic, great, and there's fun stories to be told about them, but this is different, because he's really good friends with Robert Kirkman. He's even a proofreader for the books. And he has said that he likes Kirk. He's never going to do Walking Dead. He's never going to do Kirkman. He's never going to do Close Friends because he feels too attached to it, the projects. Um, and that makes sense. It's hard to be critical on something that you're that, you know, if it's your best friend doing it or a really close friend or if you even proofread the stuff, and you, you know. So you can't really give an honest criticism. I don't have much bad. The art in the beginning was pretty crappy. Uh, and then they switch up artists at about issue seven, and although it's not that much different, it gets good. Uh, it's a simple style of art. And that's it. I didn't like the artist in the beginning. Uh, it also is a complaint is that this is only one-third. Yeah, this is compendium number one. There's a two and a three that are both the same size. There's so much goodness out there. It's just so much, though. It's, I mean, I want to read other things and review other things and talk about other things. And I want to read every bit of this story. Uh, but we've gotten up to issue 47. 
It's a story of a guy who is the son of a superhero. Who's invincible. Well, the superhero's not, it's, uh, I forget what his dad's name is, actually. Because that stuff's not important. I mean, I'll tell you a little basics, but really that's not important. If you ever read Walking Dead, it's kind of like saying the, uh, the zombies are not important. They're really not in the storyline. Um, you're never upset when a zombie kills somebody. That's just what happens. But in issue 100 of Walking Dead with Negan... I mean, I was literally reading this in a cafe waiting for some spaghetti. I remember exactly where I was because the look I got. And I'm reading not issue 100, but the book that it was in. And at the moment that Negan hit Glenn in the head with the baseball bat, I just slammed the book down and went, Fuck no! Fuck you! I'm like, Ooh, that's really not something you yell out at a, in a restaurant. Because I was actually emotionally involved with Glenn at this point. And the, the death was meaningless. It was just shocking and meaningless. But it meant something. You know, it, it was meaningless. Like, there was no reason to do it. He just did it to assert authority. If you've seen the show, it's even more lame. Uh, Negan just does it. He's like, one of you is going to die. And they're like, why? He goes, so you know I'm boss. That's basically what he's saying, you know. <clears throat> and he picks Glenn. And that's it. There's no reason Glenn got picked other than Glenn got picked. And I'm getting that because it's the same writer and getting to that because if Glenn had been killed by a zombie, it would have been like, well, yeah, that's a tough world, but people killed him. And that's what his writing is. And not that people kill people or whatever in this. It's the people. It's how they deal with relationships, how they deal with each other. That I mean, now I'll tell you about Invincible, without really spoiling. It's so I mean, there's story plots that I would I'm not even going to spoil, but these aren't. Um, they're just him falling in love, him dealing with the death or disappearance of his dad. Um, you don't really know which it was at that time. He he basically his dad's a superhero, and it turns out at about age. 18, he gets his powers. And they always kind of thought he would. His dad told him, someday, you know, you might get my strength and ability to fly. And one day, he just kind of gets them. And so that's the first part of the book. Almost 12 issues of him. He gets the powers. He decides he wants to do stuff. So he wears like a bandana on his head or whatever. You know, kind of a non-costume. Um, with a hoodie or something like that. You know, that idea where he flies around and does stuff. Um, his dad talks to him and goes, you know, you really need to uh, get a real costume if you're going to do this. Let's get you a costume. Let's get you a name. Let's do it. And I'll teach you. And, and it's a father-son bonding part in the beginning. Um, which is a wonderful story. And... You get a little further into it after he gets his costume and he's getting established. He decides his name's going to be Invincible. <laughs> now, the reason his father's here, he's not a superhero, he's an alien. Like Superman, he came to our planet. Uh, which, was that known as being? I don't know. It's so long reading this whole thing. Here. But it really doesn't matter. He's here, but he was also here for nefarious reasons. And they have to have a fight, and... It appears the son kills the father, but really the father just leaves. Um, and he knows that. And his mom knows that. But as far as the world knows, the superhero was killed um, and the dad died simultaneously in a car accident, is what the world... And it turns out now to find out that they're actually all working also for the government. And we bring in other heroes. And it just was some funny, cute names like uh, um, Duplicate. And I think it was his name, Repeat. He, he shows up way late in the book. There's Duplicate, she can make duplicates of herself. One of those multiple man type characters. Her name is Kate, and she superhero name is Duplicate. Silly stuff. And his name, her brother does the same thing. I think it was Repeat. Um, it wasn't. It's something else that the last part of the name is a person's name. 
I don't know, it doesn't matter. It's funny. Uh, there's Adam Eve. There's a lady who has the powers of, she can manipulate, her name's Eve, and she can manipulate Adams. Um, at first you think she can shrink or whatever, but no, that's, uh, oh, there's other, I, I forget, they're fun names, though. They're not, you know. You've got all these other heroes, and now he's getting into relationship. He gets in a relationship in college. He goes off to college. He's trying to be a superhero and be a boyfriend. And he goes off to adventures in space and other places because the government tells him to. But he hasn't told the girlfriend he's a superhero yet. So you've got that dynamic. You've got all these tropes, all kinds of comic book uh, cliches. Like, here's the super who has to leave, you know, right at the last minute when everything's hitting the fan. And all of a sudden, the superhero shows up, like Clark Kent leaving at the, uh, you know, and the Superman showing up. It's, it's all that stuff, but done in such a self-aware, but so interesting. Because, again, the story does not focus on him having to get away and then what the hero does. It focuses on him getting away and what the people react to. They don't really care that the hero showed up. I mean, they're glad they're being helped, but it's there's no emotion to it. They're showing the emotion about where'd that guy go? Is he okay? You know, that sort of stuff, which is really, really... I, I don't know. It's a solid, solid read. I'm going to read more Kirkman stuff. Um, I'm definitely going to read Compendium 2 and Compendium 3. Uh, when I do it is... Who knows? I mean, I've got a few other things I want to read. And like I said, these are unwieldy books. Um, but I want to buy these because they're just such a nice, solid... I mean, buying a whole bunch of trades, it's probably 10 trades, and those cost... I don't know. It, it would be... It's probably cheaper and easier to find the compendiums. They're out there. They're easy to find. Finding every little smaller section pieces, you know. And then there's some. He shows up, I guess, somewhere after fifty as a character called in uh, the Astonishing Wolfman. I don't know anything about that. I just know that's a character written by him that appears first in this book, and it ran 150 issues. So, I mean, and that's what Walking Dead ran 165 issues. This guy, you know, he 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 writes, and uh, he's much better than I thought because Walking Dead is. I mean, it's good, but I thought it, it's weak. And reading this and seeing what he can do, yeah, it's definitely, Walking Dead's his weak material. Uh, this is, I mean, it's the stuff in this universe and seeing these people, because every character in here is compelling. <clears throat> Even if you can't remember them forever, they're compelling, at least at, during the time when they come back. And I mean, when you first meet a guy named Alan the Alien, which is a silly name, and then you forget about him. He shows up again, you know, 10 issues later, and you're like, I love that dude, you know. So I don't know what to say about it other than it. it's great. Um, I wouldn't pick up the compendium. If you want to give it a try, try to find the, the cheapest or used copy, the first one, try it. Uh, you're going to fall in love and buy this stuff. But, uh, you know, try it cheap. I always say try cheap first. I went crazy and bought this. I was nuts. This was so hard to, physically hard to read. <clears throat> I don't mean it was, you know, too heavy. It was, it was too heavy, really, because you can't sit and hold it like a book if you're sitting out in the open. Uh, you pretty much have to sit at a desk. And that's not a common place for me to be reading. But anyways, but that's how I'll read the next two. Uh, now that I know what I'm into. And I, I said I loved it. Thanks, Dank. I really appreciate this one. Uh, this recommendation is solid. Have a good one, folks.